Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. The jungle is one of the most popular and impactful roles in the game, so we've decided to make another video talking about champions that you need to play in order to improve. We're going to cover 5 junglers you need to pick up if you want to climb or improve and also explain the thought process behind our picks. Our analysts put up a lot of conversation into these topics and a lot of consideration into these picks, especially because jungle is such a tricky role. Make sure you leave any feedback or comments down below and also let us know what's the most fun or troll build that you've ever used on a champion. But before we get started, make sure you go to ProGuides.com if you want to see huge improvements in your rank. We upload video guides like this one every single day on our website and as of now, we're currently uploading a challenger gameplay analysis guide for every single champion, so make sure you click that link below. Also, we have an exclusive coaching feature called Play with a Pro, which provides instant, on-demand 24-7 coaching from the best of the best. Trust me guys, you don't want to miss out on this, so sign up today. Now with that being said, let's jump into it. Our first pick is the good old Jarvan the Fourth. He's extremely versatile and can adapt to any playstyle reasonably well. For clarity, let's first go over Jarvan's strengths and his weaknesses. Number one, he's a very strong ganker, he has great engage, he deals a lot of damage, and he is a very safe pick. Some of his weaknesses are that his abilities can be dodged, and his EQ combo loses to a lot of other abilities, and of course his scaling isn't as good as some other champions. Some champions heavily lean towards one playstyle and as a result, may create imbalances in your game knowledge. As an example, you might get really good at power farming by playing Master Yi or Karthus, but you might be lacking in your ability to aggressively gank early on. Jarvan is adaptable, so you need to be the same when you play him. Jarvan's greatest strengths are his excellent engage and the fact that he's pretty good at literally everything a jungler needs to be able to do. While his ultimate does not provide hard crowd control, it's still a valuable engage tool because of the utility that it provides by boxing in his enemies. One common perception of Jarvan is that he doesn't have any weaknesses, which highly attributes to his solid win rate. More accurately, it's just that his weaknesses aren't really that exploitable. His EQ combo does lose versus a lot of other abilities, but this is both extremely situational and also able to be played around. Playing Jarvan allows you to practice your ganks, your pathing, and your engages. As one of the best level 2 gankers in the game, it's essential to learn how to split the map. You have to learn a lot about jungle pathing to play Jarvan to his full potential. Based on whether you can find successful ganks or not, you'll need to look to path to repeat gank, or instead recognize that you have to power farm your jungle while protecting your laners instead. We have some videos on our YouTube channel and a great course on ProGuides.com that you can check out to help you attain a powerful foundation for these concepts. Later into the game, the most crucial part of Jarvan's gameplay is his vision control and his engages. You will learn the value of flanking, otherwise you probably won't be winning as many games as you should. This is where vision control really comes into play. Finding good engages stems from sweeping as much vision as you can and choosing a good area to flank from. In solo queue, one of the biggest issues players across all elos have is understanding when to engage and also having the courage to initiate fights. Successful teamfights are the bread and butter to winning games on Summoner's Rift, and if you can develop this skill, there's absolutely no doubt in our minds that you're going to be carrying your games. Once again though, Jarvan is pretty good at everything. He farms, he ganks, he teamfights, and he dives pretty well. Jarvan is a simple but very effective champion who you can nearly master with very little time. By learning him quickly, you give yourself the chance to focus on your macro play and your decision making. There's less on your plate, so you can focus more on your homework, you know? Our next pick is Kindred. She's a champion that allows you to develop your understanding of pathing and also abuse range advantages. Here are some of her pros and her cons. Number one, and her greatest strength is that she's a ranged champion. Number two, she scales very well. She also tends to hard counter burst champions or execute champions. She's also very agile. She snowballs unbelievably hard. And of course, her mark mechanic is really good for her. However, unfortunately for Kindred, some of her weaknesses are again her mark mechanic being a double-edged sword because of the way that it makes you path, you get really hard countered by displacement abilities, you're very squishy, and your ultimate can be counterintuitive at times. As one of the few marksman junglers, Kindred's strongest asset is her range. It allows her to thrive versus champions who trade mobility for damage such as Rek'Sai. Quite obviously, red buff is one of the most elementary assets to the jungle. Range champions take advantage of its slowing property so you can learn to understand how valuable it really is. Honestly, a lot of skirmishes are decided solely of whether or not you have red buff. Playing Kindred is definitely going to be excellent practice for your mechanics as your fights are often going to rely on your kiting, your spacing, and how well you can dodge abilities. And of course, Kindred scaling is
is one of the best in the game. She does insane damage in the late game while providing some of the most valuable utility that any champion does. A mechanic unique to Kindred is her marks. The pattern that they spawn in is somewhat random, and it's up to the player to determine whether or not they should attempt to go take them. Playing Kindred teaches you how to properly place value on objectives. Sometimes it's a hard in to completely botch your pathing to go for a mark, while other times there are ways you can make it the right choice. You have to assess the state of your teammates' lanes and have a good read on your opponent's pathing. Kindred's short cooldown on her Q gives you a lot of room for creativity in your pathing since you can easily jump over walls found throughout the entire jungle. While this might sound like it's specific to only Kindred, these skills carry over to any jungler you play. As a jungler, period, you need to know when to change your pathing based on when things happen during the game. Regardless of whether or not you're able to fully take advantage of what Kindred can teach you, she's a great addition to anybody's champion pool. Her learning curve isn't super easy, but she's far from the most difficult end of the spectrum. You'll need to be able to kite and move in between your attacks, but luckily you don't really have any skill shots to aim. Whenever your team is lacking some damage, or you can use Kindred's ultimate to counter someone on the enemy team, Kindred ends up being a solid pick. Next up is Nunu and his good buddy Willem. As a tankier, more defensive jungler, he adds a lot of variety and hits some other necessary skills that you might need. Let's talk about some of his strengths and weaknesses. Number one, of course, he's very tanky. He provides great engage and disengage, and of course, excellent neutral objective control. His weaknesses are that he has low damage, especially later on into the game after he gets outscaled, and he can have a hard time ganking if he has to rely on his teammates quite a bit. Nunu's gameplay focuses a lot on protecting protecting your teammates, controlling the jungle through both vision and invades, and of course heavy emphasis on neutral objectives. Since Nunu is both tanky and able to deal amazing single target damage to monsters, he's easily one of the best junglers for forcing Dragon, Rift Herald, and even Baron. Games with Nunu are about slowing down the tempo, making sure random uncontrollable fights don't occur, and stabilizing the early game, that way you can literally snowball through the mid and late game. What you need as Nunu is a strong understanding of which which invades are safe to go for. As a rather tanky champion and also a great counter jungler, there's a lot more freedom to do so without much consequence. Your best bet is to counter gank lanes or ganking for lanes that are already having good setup for you. It's not that Nunu's ganks are bad, it's just that they can be a little bit harder to execute. Instead, Nunu can assert his presence by helping his teammates take lane priority and then using it to apply pressure onto his direct opponent. Doing so will alleviate pressure for the rest of his team and also give them the breathing room that they need in order to play aggressively. Whenever his teammates pull ahead or have pressure because of what Nunu did, Nunu is able to force objectives. It's a very simple formula for playing him. Find the enemy jungler, stop their ganks, give your laners the ability to pressure their lanes, and then force the objectives. This methodology is a great way to secure victories when you can't find random kills through ganking or skirmishes. Fourth on our list is everybody's favorite bug, Kha'Zix. Here are some of his strengths and his weaknesses. He has ridiculously high burst damage. He snowballs very hard, he can easily make picks, and he takes objectives very quickly. However, he has a few weaknesses. He has a pretty abusable early game. As an assassin, he's also both squishy and hard countered by crowd control. Kha'Zix is a pick who is interchangeable with many other assassins, like Nocturne, Rengar, and Evelyn. We're using him as our example here because he just seems to snowball harder than the other ones in this current meta. You can definitely pick your favorite one, but there'll be some slight differences between each one. When Kha'Zix is ahead, it feels almost impossible to play against him. While you likely won't 1v9 your games if you first pick him, this shouldn't dissuade you from picking him up. Burst damage is one of the most valuable tools built into League of Legends, especially in disorganized play, which Hello, that's solo queue. People get greedy or overextend all the time, and Kha'Zix can capitalize on this exceptionally well. Since he can kill his targets in less than a second, you have to learn how to abuse vision to pick off isolated targets. In team fights, this really means that you'll have to practice patience and be able to identify moments where you can jump in to assassinate your priority targets. Since pickmaking is your greatest asset, you have to learn how to transition a numbers advantage into tangible leads. Make a pick, force an objective, and make another pick, or pick up those objectives for free when you're 
your opponents don't try to contest. He's honestly one of the strongest junglers in the game currently, but we do need to address his weaker early game. Since it's pretty abusable, one great skill you have to learn on Kha'Zix is how to avoid the enemy jungler. You need to prioritize taking early vision or learn how to make educated guesses on the enemy jungler's location and also what their game plan is. From there, you have to develop your own plan within seconds. That way you can avoid fighting them and make it to a later stage of the game where you can confidently fight them head on. This is just as valuable as the other things you learn by playing Kha'Zix, so don't undervalue this. The higher you climb, the more you'll understand the value of knowing how to avoid fights that you simply cannot win. Our last pick is Elise. While it might come to a surprise as you guys, our analyst chose her because of her dominance in high-low games and because she's a high-tempo jungler. And no, we're not throwing shots at anyone with that statement. So we should first talk about some of her strengths and her weaknesses. As far as strengths, she's arguably the best tower diving jungler in the game. On top of that, she has devastatingly strong ganks, she's able to make long range picks, and of course is a magic damage option in the jungle. However, her weaknesses is that she only really has single target damage, and she falls off pretty hard late game. From her pros and cons, it's easy to understand that when you pick Elise, you are trying to end the game as quickly as you can. Elise's strongest points in the game are the early and mid game, when you're able to burst down enemies as quickly as an assassin can. But what makes her different from assassins though, is how much safer she really is, and how she's able to start fights from a distance, since in her human form she is a ranged champion. As a pick, she's one of the few junglers in the game that does magic damage. And right now, currently team compositions do lean heavily towards physical damage, so you're able to better round out your team's damage split. However, she has lackluster AP ratios and really only does good single target damage, so she does not do well late game and falls off really hard. This definitely is not a reason to avoid her though. In fact, that's exactly why you should play her. There are way too many mistakes that go unacknowledged here. When playing Elise, it forces you to play a rather high caliber game in order to find success. The most important thing about playing her is knowing your limits in terms of diving turrets. Turrets are rarely a safe place to be when playing versus Elise, as her kit is practically designed for diving. You'll have to understand your limits extremely well. If there are dive opportunities that you miss, you basically miss opportunities to win the game. Use your fast clearing to quickly get yourself into position to gank for your lanes. Elise is able to abuse the natural flow of minion waves extremely well off of one successful gank. Since she's able to dive her opponents, all she really needs to do is get one of her lanes ahead, that way they can take favorable trades. From there, she can look to dive that same lane whenever her teammates can chunk out their opponent. You want to continue to accelerate the game with repeat ganks and dives into taking objectives off of the map while playing her, and then just pushing to win. That's going to conclude our jungle picks to climb and improve. Thank you so much for watching, we really appreciate it. If you guys want more content to help you improve, check out ProGuides.com, where we've teamed up with pro players to create guides designed to help you take your game to the next level. Also, keep an eye out on our YouTube channel, where we're constantly updating it with new content just like this. Good luck on the Rift, and I'll see you all next time.